what the weird thing about emo music is that like it's it's a genre, but it's it can kind of sound like anything, right? Like you don't think about it when you're a kid, like what emo is short for. It's emotional, right? So like anything that I listen to, I think when I was a kid, I would listen back to and think of being as instinctively sort of emo. So I listen to Bright Eyes. So that's obviously if you were to Google emo, you'd get Bright Eyes. In the modern context, you'd get like Phoebe Bridgers. But I listen to Deftones and like Changing the House of Flies to me is an emo record even though they're a metal band. So it's like, it's such a fluid, that's what I love about it. It's, it's just massively fluid and, and probably, in hindsight, the biggest like inspiration for me across all genres because you go to someone like Kurt Cobain, we were talking about Pixies earlier, when you go into the 80s, there was loads of emo records. They just weren't defined as it because it was like bracketed different. Um, what are the top five or top three emo albums everyone should own? Oh my God, that's an impo it's an impossible question to answer. You need to, you do need a Bright Eyes album probably like I'm wide I'm wide awake it's morning probably like you probably need an American football record um I, I like I love Sunny Day Real Estate you know like you could dip into that I don't know if there's a particular album that I would like recommend like because it's subjective you know and, and then I think of pe people like Sofiane Stevens as being emo and being probably one of my most important influences across the board so like any record by him, even like Carrie and Lowell, which is a pretty modern record. That's such an emo record, you know? Like, it's hard to identify. There's such different ways in, and it's because it covers so many different, like, little micro genres within it. Mm. Like, if you listen to, like, modern baseball or something like that, you're not good. Or you listen to, like, Mineral, like a band from the 90s that are so obscure, but, like, incredible. And, or you go to, like, there's the more overt stuff, like, Saves the Day, and, like, that type of emo. Or, like, what is it? I mean, we haven't even talked about like dashboard confession. Like, it, it, my point is, this is a long answer, but I can't. As I get into it, I'm building up steam. Where I'm like, my Chemical Romance. You got to talk about the Black Parade as being like the most ambitious emo record ever created, um, and it's worth a listen just for that. But you know, like, yeah, I don't, I'll go on forever. <laughs> I go on forever about this. I was never the. Like, I went to a lot of metal shows and got in the pit. But I was still very like with everybody. Like I was just a very like I would I would call myself like a, a wholesome pit participant. <laughs> like I was never like getting crazy because I just always I I'm a pretty considered individual. I don't really get that out of control. I try and like keep myself within like a space where I'm like okay I can get home safe. I can you know because I don't like the idea of my brain doesn't compute it well. So, like, I've been to a lot of metal shows, like, you know, and have definitely gone with it, but to a degree. And then eventually I was just like, I mean, and I even say this as, like, an 18-year-old. I was like, let's just sit in the, let's just sit in the seats. Like, we'll see everything better. And, it, like, so, like, my favorite memories are, like, I went to, my dad got me tickets to see Smash Pumpkins in the Olympia which was the last show with like the full proper lineup before they disbanded. And uh, it would have been like 99, maybe something like that, 99, 2000. And it was incredible and it was so good. And then that same year, maybe went to see uh, Foo Fighters in the Olympia. And it was also, we were sat in, in, the, in the, the first balcony in the front seats and Dave Grohl did like a walk along the whole balcony and he came right past us. And those, those moments for me were like those, cathartic moments like I don't know if I got much out of being in a pit and like kind of like going crazy because I think not to sound ridiculous but I think maybe when I was a kid I even kind of just my interaction with music was a little different to other people's because it's what I wanted to do in a more earnest way and in more of like a even though I didn't have the vocabulary for it, I didn't have it figured out what that meant. I was like, I want to witness this. Mm. I don't want to leave and not feel like I saw what Taylor Hawkins was doing or like, you know, Pat Smear. You know, th th these people were my heroes and I wanted to take it in in real time. So I have endless memories of like, really like feeling a show. You know, my favorite show of all time was 2010, going to see the National, that the summer or the winter when it snowed. And like they, they played that first show and it was like pure magic. And Matt is like, in my opinion, like he's my favorite like lyricist of like the modern sort of like, I guess again, emo-ish kind of world. So like those moments, but I was, I was in a box. Like I am like, I'm not pretending that I was like, I, I do like to just like be able to like really see 
the whole landscape or something like that as it's unfolding. It's just that's always been my my vibe. I actually wrote about Freak on a Leash in my uh, my English paper. It was like the question was like, is our music videos an art form? I was like, yes, they are. So I, th I wrote about that and I wrote about like a Weezer video and the Buddy Holly one and a couple more. I can't remember what grade I, what I got, but I think it was all right. I think it was maybe like a B or something. But um, I just had a vision of like, like, because like a, it's pretty stoic people that review those things, like or review them, <laughs> that like grade them. Is that what you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nuns and stuff in Offaly, and I just had a vision of our opening thing, and I'm talking about like the this the bullet time thing in the freak on a leak uh, on a leash video. <laughs> I was just thinking, what is she gonna be like thinking about this? But that was my that was my leaving cert experience with like metal.